After just 14 short years of status quo, the king of mediocrity, Toyota, has commanded the upcoming queen of the outback, Land Cruiser 300, to gyrate somewhat suggestively before the cameras ahead of an official coronation event later this year. It's a hippo belly dancing under a blanket again. And yet, one really cannot look away. Predictably, nobody in the media, thanks mainly to bad incentives and small intellects, is game to tell His Highness, dude, it's really just the same old queen, only with vestigially different hair and makeup. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can just click the car that's up there now, dude. Toyota has had well over a decade now to work on the 300 series So it's not much of a surprise to me, at least, that they've exceeded expectations in every respect. I expected the absolute minimum required, and I'm therefore quite pleased to report that they've done even less than that with this new tart. Despite this, of course, the holy banjos are a pluckin' with even greater enthusiasm right across the Dingo Piss Creek World Heritage Area tonight as upper-middle-class bogans rise up and rejoice. Yes. Coronation at the Creek 2021. The Royal Prick Tease has officially kicked off as Toyota drip-feeds the media every excruciatingly minor Land Cruiser 300 detail. This is going to continue for months. It's an endurance event and certainly not a sprint. I will be gagging for release by about August. The old queen, of course, has been rocking the creek for 14 years now. Hashtag respect. Seen by many as the only credible choice for towing one's three and a half ton effluent carriage across the busted ass Australian outback. With its four and a half litre twin turbo V8 cranking out almost as much power as a V6 petrol Nissan Pathfinder. <laughs> I don't know how they tuned it that well either. The new Queen's had the nip and tuck, certainly. She's down to a 3.3 litre twin turbo V6 diesel with 27 kilowatts more than the old Queen's V8. So, 27% less swept capacity. Down there, 13.5% more power. It's a friggin' miracle. Officially, the V6 is 227 kilowatts and 700 newton meters peak outputs, with the peak torque being 50 newton meters or about 8% higher than that of the old TART. No word on weight yet, as I understand it, but By any estimation, she is still rather a beefy lass. Corn-fed, I think they call it in America. So the gains here could easily be offset by added heft. And I guess on this, only time will tell. This V6 is going to be such a hard sell for the mediocre boy king, the wonder bra of engines. See, the Bogan faithful did not ask for this reduction in the number of holy cylinders. Not at all. It's been foisted upon them by environmental expediency. And there's nothing a Land Cruiser owner hates more than the environment, perversely. The big shitter, as the 300 might soon be known, well, it needed a V6 to meet emissions requirements and efficiency stipulations and things of this nature, not to appease buying public sentiment. That's pretty clear. And this is a definite cave-in by the king on this. 
And of course, Toyota has done what it does best here to fit in, which would be as little as it frigging could and still get away with it. See, your average cashed up bogan, I mean land cruiser buyer, does not really care about numbers or applied physics, power and torque and revs, things of this nature, complex stuff like this. Like, what is it really useful for anyway? It's all so confusing. Newton meters and kilowatts and revs and numbers. It's all just part of a clever scheme by the ruling elites to set up a new world order and keep we and the masses docile, right? Just like fluoride in the water. The elites have therefore taken your precious V8 and replaced it with this anorexic six-cylinder. And Toyota is as much of a victim here as you, dude. This is what having your head in a green vice really looks like. The average Land Cruiser owner Well, he really does have his intellect maxed out with V8 hard, V6 limp. And nobody but nobody wants limp. Thus, the venerable 200 series could easily go down in the book of automotive revelations in the Bogan Bible as the last real man's land cruiser before the apocalypse. In time, you might not even qualify for a creek front campsite at Bogan Mecca, I mean DPC, in a 300. It's certainly a roll of the dice at this point. Probably no petrol V6 for Australia either. Like nobody statistically bought the old petrol Land Cruiser anyway, like 2% of the market. Such losers. Although there is one plan for other, more genteel, advanced markets. Possibly a V6 petrol hybrid too. Not for us, but interesting, huh? Toyota is, of course, completely schizophrenic on this. Total split personality. Like one side of Toyota's brain busily wears its planet-saving credentials right out there on its sleeve with the Prius and the vegan bamboo underpants in tofu and all that hoopla. And the other side eats six-inch thick T-bones for breakfast and it sells these indefensibly CO2-belching shitboxes, which you can see from space. So that's interesting. No communication whatsoever between the two hemispheres at the highest level within Toyota. It's like Pyongyang and Seoul up there, only in Aichi. These are called facts, okay? You don't have to like them. 10-speed auto for the new 300, of course, and I do hope it hunts from ratio to ratio even more enthusiastically than the Ranger with the 2-litre twin-turbo 10-speed powertrain, especially when towing one sewage across the great emptiness. Look forward to that. Endless meandering from 8 to 9 to 8 to 10 to 7, then 9 and back to 8. Yes. See, love? It's working. Might as well wear the crown in every respect, I'd suggest. And pro tip, when you've got 700 Newton meters across a 4,000 RPM rev range, more gearbox ratios really don't help. Beyond eight, it's just engineering masturbation. All new TNGA chassis too. Yes, TNGA, Toyota New Global Architecture. Nice name, your highness, seeing as you launched that back in 2015. So today, only Toyota could claim that this is still actually new with a straight face. And talk about your self-defeating prophecy over time, like right there. All-wheel drive, two-speed transfer case, not confirmed, but almost certain. Senior executive bullshitters at the palace claim the body and chassis is, quote, up to 200 kilos lighter, but no word on overall weight yet, right? Still likely to be a big, corn-fed, two-and-a-half tons-ish thing. And that's without you and your gut and your lovely wife on board. There's a lower mass centre, thanks to dropping the engine 
28 millimetres. It's also 70 millimetres further back, owing to its compactness compared with the V8. Anyway, it's also 120% stiffer. That's confirmed. Actually, 125 right now, so that's nice. And yet, the approach angle is exactly the same, 32 degrees. Departure angle, slight improvement there, up from 24 on the old girl to 26.5. Therefore, you know, better at backing one out. And that's always important out there. Hashtag regularity. No word on breakover angle at this point, but with wheelbase and ground clearance pretty similar, if not identical, how much different can it actually be? Weighting depth 700 millimetres with 230 of ground clearance. So important. Dropping the kids at that private school in the eastern suburbs. One never knows when a peasant might get in the way. Dingo Piss Creek, of course, always flows about 750 deep with 250 millimetre boulders randomly strewn across every crossing. So, to get to the fabled far side, the better to catch the ferry and visit Puntang Island, minimum $50,000 spend at ARB is going to be required. And ARB desperately needs your money, of course, to augment the $9.8 million it leached out of the taxpayer under J Fry's half assed JobKeeper scheme. Well done. Except, of course, morally. Personal opinion. Taxpayer donation was 18 incredible percent of ARB's net profit recently, so that's nice. And most of those contributors didn't even get a nudge bar out of it. I know I did not. Quite the opposite, really. At least Toyota gave its JobKeeper handout back, and that's kind of an advertisement for genuine accessories right there, when you think about it. ARB is doubtless forging ahead, wanking at fever pitch towards a raft of 300 series warranty shredding accessories. All the usual stuff, you know. 12 inch lift, pedestrian shredding bull bar, rollover enhancement pack. I mean, heavy duty roof rack. Pedders also almost certainly striving to offer a GVM upgrade if old man emu doesn't pip them at the post. 12 tons this time, I think. I do not know how they achieve that with just springs and shocks. That really is clever. Anyway, just back to your new 300 series, okay? Get it into the nearest ARB service bay stat. Hook that Dyson direct to what's left of your bank account and utter the time-honoured mystical incantation. I'm off to the creek, mate. Give me the usual, one of everything, like I'm planning on crossing over. Thanks, mate. That should do it, I guess. It'll be ready Wednesday, dude. Everything Toyota got wrong will be fixed by the aftermarket industry, which is not that much when you think about it. Like, huge technical innovation for the big T, carrying over the independent front suspension and the solid rear axle like that into TNGA. <laughs> Seamless engineering integration there. Coil springs, like coils. That's amazing. At the rear. And equally brilliant, fitting that viscous coupled cooling fan to an allegedly modern engine. I really didn't see that one coming. That's awesome. I wonder if you can hear that at 100 k's an hour. Probably. Apparently there's terrain sensing and even roll bar decoupling at both ends. One of my ex-girlfriends was like that, but Tiffany. Probably got an ex-Land Rover dude to work out the details, like Toyota, not Tiffany, obviously. He was such a traitor with Toyota. <laughs> I wonder if you can hear that at 100 k's an hour. Probably. Apparently there's terrain sensing and even roll bar decoupling at both ends. One of my ex-girlfriends was like that, Tiffany. Probably got an ex-Land Rover dude to work out the details. Like Toyota, not Tiffany, obviously. He was such a traitor. The ex-Land Rover dude, obviously. Front and rear lockers too in some variants, I hear. 
That's probably just to give ARB the shits, like, take that, air locker. <laughs> High fives all round in R&D for that one. Amazing attention to detail. But of course, there is a glacé cherry on the icing of the new Queen's cake, which provides a rare insight indeed into the kind of outdated dipshit who actually buys this kind of outdated dung box. You can see it, right? It's like it's there in plain sight. Have a closer look. It's there like the cojones on a big black barker. Look again, dude. Some of you are doubtless seeing the his and hers centre console boxes, which I agree are quite clever, and not to mention important for demarcation while you're powering out there across the gaffer. But it's not that. Look again, my blue singlet friend. Nothing says cutting edge quite like an in-dash CD player in 2021. <coughs> Thank you, agree. <sighs> Front and center on an MY22 vehicle. That's just perfect, like CDs. Lock it in, Eddie, for the next Decade and a half. Should come with a black and white cathode ray tube centre infotainment screen, I'd suggest, just for complete philosophical integration. This CD player, more than anything else, gives me some insight into the kind of person we're targeting here, who actually buys these overpriced, underdone shitters. Overpriced, okay? Fully loaded Nissan Patrol, roughly $40,000 less than fully loaded Land Cruiser. And show me one thing the old queen will do that the Nissan will not in practice. You don't have to like it. It's called a fact. Anyway, if you are that person using the term loosely, that person who thinks a nylon wallet with his 100 favourite CDs in it, Barry Manilow, Celine Dion, Rick Astley, or Tony Basil. Oh, Mickey, what a pity you don't understand. You take me by the heart when you take me by the hand. Just as prophetic today as it was when you first left home to cross the Simpson and Great Sandy back in... 1981. Maybe wham! Remember them when you want to raunch it up in the effluent carriage following a tasty kangaroo korma and a case of veeb. <laughs> Wake me up before you go go. But hey, face it, you're going to hear him anyway, like the walls in the WC are like paper in those things. In fact, I think they are paper. And therefore, he's really not planning on going solo. Where were we? If you think a CD collection is actually superior to having 2,000 songs in a phone on a chip smaller than a postage stamp arranged in neat playlists to suit the mood, then kindly consider carefully the impact of this kind of thinking on future generations. Like, this is a very personal decision and everybody is entitled to make it according to their want, but just think about it carefully, okay? Do a freaking CD player. That just takes the cake, doesn't it? The outdated cake. The 300 series is the vehicle nobody really needs anymore. Nor is the planet gagging for a shitbox such as this, at least as I understand the current state of environmental affairs. I do wonder how many Prii the bipolar king must sell to balance the overall environmental ledger. A shitload, most probably, like, and a metric shitload too. The 300 is a small step at best and in the wrong direction and certainly not in any Neil Armstrong way. Not enough and well overdue, manifestly inefficient and used by date expired, even prior to the 
coronation. I therefore predict Toyota will sell them as fast as they can make them roll down the friggin' assembly line for decades to come. And this, of course, is why intelligent extraterrestrial life declines to make itself known. The new queen is something of an intelligence test, one I fear we are collectively <sighs> imminently to fail.